What's up, everyone? This is Sean Heineman. I am back with another segment of Two Divorced Guys, Who Remarried. And I have, of course, my co-host with me, Vincent Fuqua. What's up, man? How you doing today? Good, man. Happy New Year 2021 already. Yes, sir. Today's segment, we're going to discuss comparison to past relationships and social media. And how does this affect marriage? I find this to be very interesting because we discussed this a little bit um, offline, but I think about today's social media world that we live in uh, and relationship goals and everybody's, um, I think this whole comparison thing. What was the quote that you said to me? Something about comparison is the thief of joy. Yep, that's exactly, that's exactly what it is. Yes, I, I love that. And I think this plays into our relationships. And I think also this could be healthy to a degree too, because I have seen some things online where I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I can implement that into my mirror. So I don't want to look at this. It's not all bad. Right. Right. It's like, you know, you can uh, chew the meat and, you know, spit out the bones. Spit out the the bones. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, So from your experience, from your experience, tell me, what do you think? What do you think about this topic? First of all, Um, you know, comparison in general is a, could be a very toxic thing, you know? So if you put in the space of, of marriage and comparing it to your past relationships, it could be very bad. So, um, I just think, is it is a topic that hit close to home? Cause I know I do it, and I have done it, right? Uh, and it's only taken as bad when it's whatever you're compared to is is better than what you are now. So, for example, if you if it's a past relationship and your spouse is saying something like, "Man, my partner was never romantic like you," mm. you'll feel good about that comparison because it's a good thing. But if they say something like, "Man, we used to travel all the time," and I know this, we don't. That's that you may take that as kind of a jab, and, and you know what I mean. It is a bad thing, so it's only uh, looked at as bad if it doesn't put you in a pretty picture, whatever they're comparing you to. Mm. <laughs> That's good. I like that, man, because there's sometimes um, in in marriage, because uh, we could talk about this offline too, as far as with friends. You can go over yeah. somebody's house, and you're hanging out with them and their spouse. And then the husband, whoever, they might do something that's really considerate, kind, or right, nice. Right, right, right. And then on your way home, she, she, you know, she might have an attitude. She's yeah, she like, is. She's definitely gonna have an attitude. <laughs> it's usually her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. She's like, you don't do that, or yeah. you know, or, or she'll know. say she noticed it. They may, they're, they're not as direct typically, unless you reach that level. But typically, they're like, I noticed. He da 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 da, you know, <laughs> which is very indirect. This way, say you, I notice you don't do that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, man. Because uh, sometimes it's easy to, because comparison. Here's the thing with comparison, man. Some people, like you said, it's not a, always a good or bad thing. It's kind of in the middle. Because think about this. Sometimes your your marriage might be on a pedestal to where when you go over that couple's house, they might be saying the same true. thing about, about you and your and your wife. True, man. I, I'm definitely, I'm in a, uh, I was in a situation, or I may not be. I'm being vague to, to protect people. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I won't be vague and I, we around a lot of married couples. I know some married couples will say to us, like, man, you guys, I really like what I see when I'm around y'all. You know, I wish. And then we may be around some couples and be like, man, they got it going on. You know what I mean? So it's like everybody, as long as there's always, that's the thing, there's always going to be a, a couple um, just sticking to marriage as a topic. There's always going to be a couple that you look at and be like, man, you know, look how they do, you know? And that doesn't, I mean, that's fine if you if that's what you're striving to be or if they're doing something you want to copy, but um I mean, what you what you think? Like, do you think that, you know, that that crosses that could cross over to a healthy 
relationship to look at another couple probably if they in the house already or something or do you do you think that's always just bad mm, that's good i know i like that i like that i think i think because in life this is just kind of my theory i think you should always have a couple that you're kind of admiring from afar um mentors and i think that's something we lost too and i think that's a whole a, another mm. topic mentorship we don't have that we've replaced mentorship with google and you yeah and videos and stuff yeah we don't yeah. have that personal interaction with people anymore so i think there's a couple that you can always aspire to 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 emulate and then you have a couple that maybe you're kind of bringing them up under your wings right 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 so it keeps you level mm -hmm. to know that you ain't you ain't all that because there's somebody yeah, they, they say yeah, because they, they said it's supposed to be kind of like like that model, like somebody you look up to, yep. somebody that's your peer. Yep. You know, y'all kind of equal friends, somebody that probably looks up to you. So you should like yeah. So I, yeah, I heard what you said. That was kind of with individuals, but it bleeds into couples too. Mm -hmm. And like you said, there's not a a lot of uh, married couples that either people would be humble enough humble enough to say they want to duplicate, or there's just not a lot of examples like. A lot of that's why people end up in hanging out with single friends or just whatever because you don't have a lot of married couples that you know personally in your area that you could go do married things with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and then especially with with this whole pandemic that we in, we got to be a little more cautious, I guess, and and people that we're around and all that. So you got all kind of different factors mm -hmm. that comes into play. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think with um, social media though. Some people, because you only see the highlights. You only see people highlight reels on social media. Yes. And we don't pay attention to this is only their highlight reel. Uh, I always joke around and say, I think I'm going to just get on one day and I'm just going to record us arguing just to sh show people that we just human like everybody else. Yeah, people know? love that too. Yeah. <laughs> Either a lot of drama or a lot of triumph. You know, it can't be like some little middle ground stuff. You either gotta be buying a house or hitting your spouse. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> For real. No, nah, uh, that's a new. Nah. One. Uh, what was you? What were you gonna say? No, nah, I think we get caught up in the highlight reels, and and yeah. then it put this expectation on your spouse to perform something that you might not be capable of doing. I think one of the biggest issues with marriage is we always try to take from somebody that we always try to take from our spouse that they might not have. Um, but, like, like give an example. Um, they might not have the capacity to love like someone else. Mm. Their love might look different, but you're trying to, since you've seen this thing on Facebook, you're trying to pull something from your spouse that they might not have. It's just like, I always use that example about a, a bank account. If you only have eight dollars in your account and you're trying to pull out a twenty, the bank account is like, I don't have it. Sorry. Yeah. And you and we try to make that withdrawal from our spouse from something that they might not have. Mm, so like but, spending other people's money. It, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The bank account probably set up different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Basically. Yeah. 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 And then it depends on if you got your stimulus check too. But anyway, that's a different. Right. Story. Right. <laughs> now. Um, yeah. Um, comparison, it's, you know, you, you don't want to, you don't want to stick to your past so much it, unless you progressing, right? You reflected mm -hmm. like, man, this is way better than my last situation. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, cause it's like ghosts, right? It's like, you can't fight. It's like Michael Jordan or, or Tupac and just those different people, artists and athletes that you try to put other people up against. And it's so hype. It's like, you can't never good or bad actually accurately compare them you know because there's no, they, there's just circumstances that's not the same i'm not even a big sports person like that mm. but i know that they should be like well him and his prime and mj and his prime like let's say lebron and mj no matter if you there's still too many variables like that means you got to recalibrate the whole teams like everything has to be different in an unrealistic way it's like impossible you can only imagine so when you try to compare like that you're in this whole imaginary world that you can't bring to that same situation 
you know, um, I'm not, am I am I saying it correctly, or, or, or is it sounding weird? Like, no, no, no. I hear you because, like, you was using the Michael Jordan dynamic with LeBron and stuff. Like, you say you have to. There's so many different variables, and even as humans, we're so different. We bring so many different um, aspects from our life, from childhood to. It, my biggest thing is when you blend, when you're putting a family together when you're bringing two individuals and you're putting them under one roof and they marry, there's so many different factors that come into play from their childhood to the way that they were taught um, yeah. about cleanliness or values or moral money, or, um, unaddressed trauma, different things mm. that they might've been through, you know? So I think even that's like, just in the first, say like a, the first year of marriage, people always talk about the first year of marriage is always tough. And that's because you got two different people coming from two different worlds trying to make it work in one world. Yeah. So we have so many different variables that it can really be challenging because as humans, we are dynamic. Um, and then we have like our facade, our, our defense mechanisms that we put up, and then we mm -hmm. have the real us. Yeah. Like you have to pull those layers back in order to get to know someone. Right. Um, so I think from the aspect of marriage, and you know, I always think about Shrek, you know, he's like, layers, donkey, layers. Oh, yeah, with the donkey, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's so many layers to us that we have to peel back. And I believe it It takes a lifetime just to know the person. One person. Yeah. If that makes sense, so. No, yeah. Uh, so, so when would you say, what... It, what have you have you ever caught yourself comparing right and, and if so like what did you do was it healthy what did you do to, to address and fix that you know um of course i've of course i've compared um to your yes. past or to the social media both oh. but i think too with the past i think it has shown me how much i have grown Okay, so that's positive. Yeah, like, oh, this is because I always, I, I make I make this joke with my wife. I always say you're the most uncomfortable person I've ever been with in my life. And when I say that, it's because I'm being challenged. You only become uncomfortable when you're being challenged. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I'm yeah. always in this spot of almost being uncomfortable because it's like, oh, because I feel like when there's tension. In your in your life when there's tension in your personal life i believe that's like god challenging you in some ways or nudging mm. you into making you grow or this is a place that i've never been before so mm. it's making me uncomfortable yeah um so i don't know if i'm answering your question but i have compared yeah. but i think with social media um i think even to a degree sometimes it could be unhealthy because you'll see somebody especially if you and your spouse are off if y'all having a bad day and you yeah, scroll, it only, it only mag magnifies it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so uh, I think we just have to be mindful that this is just their highlight reel. Yeah. And don't believe the hype because at the end of the day, when you turn off the so social media, you still with, with your spouse. That person. Yeah. Wherever you go, there you are. Right. So now I feel you. I think one of the key takeaways, man, that, that you said is the highlight will like, Cause it's just, we, it's just, that's just what it is when you're looking. I, I mean, it's very few people will go out there and say, I'm having problems in my marriage. Like, I'm, I don't think I ever read that post. I've been on social media for a long time, unless it reaches that level already. And they just talk about, they already broke up or something, but they usually don't take you through their whole relationship. They show you smiling with the kids. They ain't going to show them no, no negative pictures. Like you said, and like you it just messes with you sometimes if if that's all you're seeing i mean i was watching this netflix uh show and um the guy killed his wife mm. it was like an m, &M thing like cause he killed his wife and the pregnant and he killed his whole family it was the wife she was pregnant and two daughters mm. so you're like damn that's crazy and and and, and basically what i took away from it because he was on the internet she was like a life coach or something. Mm -hmm. And he was just, you know, a regular dude working. I forgot where he worked. Mm -hmm. But on um, the internet, it looked good, their relationship. Like, they would post this stuff and the pictures. And little well, did you know he, this guy was going to kill his whole family. If you just base it off of Facebook, you, you, you'll you be like, man, this is a good couple right here. And then, like, a couple 
couple years later, you notice he killed the whole family because he had an affair and stuff like that. You like you don't know what's going, so you can't be looking at these people. <laughs> like you can look at them like here and there and take like you said, take the positive from it, like ideas and stuff. But don't be trying to be like these people. Yeah, and like you say, behind closed doors, you just have no idea. You don't because everybody's not going to. Now, I, I will say in some of those marriage groups that are men, sometimes they do. I think sometimes they air their spouse out, though. Sometimes I think they might go a little too hard. They air out their spouse. They're like, yeah, yeah I caught my husband cheating. But yeah. it, it, it always take two to tangle. I'm not saying I'm not trying to justify him or her cheating. I'm just saying. No, no, I hear you. Marriage so, oh yeah, so that's a grimy. I never, you know what, in the marriage class, I haven't seen that before. But probably, I uh, think in, in my wife's club, is, it was more with women. A lot of them are married. I've seen stuff like that. Uh, I, in the marriage class I've been in, they uh, be showing their spouse praying and stuff. They, you know, show them in the backyard like this. And they be like, like they caught, and then you know what? They probably did catch them all acid, but you just never know. It'd be seeming so scripted. Like he'd be like this, and she'd be like, I, like, I caught him praying. He does it every morning. He probably do, you know, but then he probably don't, you know. It just it, they just put up all these like images of like, like you know, just the the best time ever, and you know. But that's what social media is all about. And um, but like you say, even with double dating, all the comedians used to say, if you ever want to break up with your with your partner, go on a double date with a happy. I remember Chris Rock said, only double date an uh, 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 unhappy, you know, couple because you don't want to play that little side by side thing, you know, yeah. but. Mm -hmm. The other thing, you just got to have healthy communication and just know, um, just be present in the moment with your spouse, man. Mm -hmm. Like, just enjoy y'all journey together and do make the best out of what you have and, and strive for y'all own goals and what you got going on. Yeah, I think everybody should have their own mission statement for their home. Um, you know, it gives a little more clarity as far as this is where we're going. You have your own little North Star. I yeah, because if you don't have one, you're forced to follow everybody else's. So I, I agree. That's a, the highlight will. Have, man, you be dropping all the gems. So, so the highlight will, and then having your own mission statement or just focus as a family. So you know what you value and what you don't value and stuff like that. Because kids do it too. You could, you could take it, your family to another family. One kid may have a cell phone and the other don't. Because you might wait a certain age, and let's say they got their, you know, the kids, they more honest and open because they don't know no better. They'd be like, hey, he got a cell phone? Or if they both got cell phones, he could watch videos that you can't watch. He was like, we watch this on his, like, so even with parents, like, because it goes to relationships, how intimate the husband and spouse are, and then how they treat their kids. Yep. And they say that too, you know, like, they be like I noticed he played, he played with Johnny, you don't play, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it goes from parenting to how they live in, like they house, whether they in an apartment or house, to how they do with their kids, cars, everything, man. It can be, it's kind of, man, I don't know, it's kind of depressing to when I think about it. And, and you know the funny thing about that is you never know until, you're, until you are aware. And yeah. I think that's the biggest thing with social media because back in the day, and I guess I'm telling my age, when we were growing up, you, you had your next door neighbors, you had people in your neighborhood. But now you're comparing your marriage to the, to the world. Yes. Amen, brother. You know, so that's that that can be uh, challenging within itself, man, um, if you aren't aware. Yeah. Um, Awareness is the only way to change, too. Like, because you ain't going to change if you're ignorant of. And, um, mm, it's, I mean, and sometimes it's just security. Like you said, you got to have your own North Star or your own compass, your own mission with your family because... Uh, some people don't like comparison because it will air them out. Yep. You know what I mean? So I can understand that. Like, if, if you really about what you're about, you don't mind comparison because you're like, sure, you can compare me to whatever. Like, I'm going to stand that, you know, either I'm going to be equal or they're going to be counterfeit because I know where I'm at. But if you're trying to hide, you know, then that means you're scared that because you know that other people are really in, either got real integrity or something like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like if you see a couple and they got each other past close to the phone and y'all don't, you know, that, that's something they're going to know. Well, I'm not going to see it either. And you can try it, but hopefully they got their own North Star for that type of scenario. You're like, girl, you know we don't do that. But, you know, or that might make you mad. It's like if you with two dating couples and the other one proposes to his girl and she's going to be looking at you like, hey, they've been dating around the same time. Like, you know, it just puts that unspoken pressure. And not all pressure is bad, but it does. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Rather they get a house. And, and you shouldn't 
um, and then and I'm gonna stop. But then and you should and you don't want to like compare yourself always to make you feel better either. Like you don't want to like just hang around a bad couple that's always arguing so y'all could make feel better about yourselves and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Or get happy with somebody moves from an apartment to a, a house to an apartment or just whatever mm. because you feel better. Like they they say you 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 don't have to. Uh, I'm not gonna say the quote, but you know what I'm saying, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna step off of it. Oh no, that's good, man. That's real because you can be in a dysfunctional relationship, but you're just a little more functional than <laughs> the other dysfunctional. Yeah, that's yeah. real. Just so you can feel better. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's do you think? That, do you think it leads uh, to divorce? I, I do. I, I had a quote on, I put something on Facebook the other day about, do you think we put too much responsibility on our spouse to kind of be our everything? I seen that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think answering that, I think it does lead to a divorce because first of all, we, we have personal issues that we haven't addressed, we haven't addressed in our life. And then we try to throw that, our insecurities on our spouse. Yeah. You know, so and I don't think no person is built to carry all your um, insecurities or all your wants or all your needs. And yeah, only God could do some stuff like that. Exactly. And that's yeah. when people try to justify um, and no shade. But when people talk about the polyamory, polyamorous relationships and stuff like that, it's like we have a little community of us. <laughs> and I don't want to jump off on that. I'm just saying, because that's funny. To each his own. It makes sense. <laughs> I mean, I don't do. I see the the angle they coming from. I see not one person can handle it, but at least you got four others. That, that's funny. That's a funny way to spin it. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> to each his own. Whatever. But the more people, they add more baggage too. That's so true. So like, it's kind of a, an ongoing cycle. Like, cause each of them gonna come with their own stuff as well. So. Yeah, and we don't think about that. We just think yeah. about what's gonna benefit me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so no nah, that's just that's just a little side note yes but i do think it it does lead to divorce um especially if we aren't willing to address um certain issues in our life i think it, it does lead because um we have those triggers and no one really know them triggers until you fly off the handle until you do something that's unexpected of you yeah. or you you know whatever um and then you like dad like i got I, I was taken out of character. That was a trigger for you. Yeah. You know, and some people, and sad thing is, some people don't even know their triggers until you say something to them. Uh, and then that's when they yeah. get out of pocket and you're like, oh, I realized that this is an issue of mine. And I think that's why therapy is important. Because um, for my wife and I, we have, you know, transparent, we have a, a marriage therapist for both of us together. And then we have our individual therapist. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so some people, because I think some people, they just get the marriage counseling, but it's almost like you go to counseling to try to get the counselor to side with you. Be like, see, they wrong. See, see, they need somebody to agree with them. But yeah. when you have your individual therapist, that's when you can sort out your own mess. Yeah. And then it's like two whole people trying to come together. It's like two broken people trying to say who's broken. Yep. Yeah. So I do think marriage, I, I do think it can lead to divorce. Um, what, what do you think uh, as we get ready to close on this? Because there's so many different places that we can go with this topic. What do you think we can do to to fix marriages per se? Is it more of you... Um, I, well, I, I think you answered it because you said more of just being aware and being uh, present. I, I think you. Yeah, said yeah, I will. Um, I totally believe that's a part of the solution. Um, being aware, being being just present, and just if you are going to uh, look at other people, um, like you said, hanging around those couples that you aspire to be like, and uh, and understanding y'all different too. You know, y'all can't. You ain't gonna. Even if you try to copy them to the T, like it's just two different people, and you're never gonna be like them exactly, and just appreciate who you and your spouse are. Mm, that's good, because it, it, because what you're saying that it kind of reminds me of that whole Bible story with David, 
Mm-hmm. You know, and, and 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 Saul with the armor, you know, he's like, I can't. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah, right. Yeah, Saul he had to wear his own thing. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. David, like, no, this is what I roll with. Yeah, you know. So I'm glad that you said that because you can always try to emulate someone, but you're still your own individual. So it would never really, uh, yeah, fit to its capacity because you're your own person with your own set of issues and your own set of strengths and stuff like that. Yeah, I like that. Hmm, yeah. that's good, man. Well, this has been another a great segment of two divorced guys. Vince, um, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you um, from a social media perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the best way at this point is definitely Facebook. Mm-hmm. And um, it's simply Vincent, last name Fuqua, F-U-Q-U-A. Mm-hmm. And um, there's not a lot of us out there. So you'll see me. You'll see me, at least in the top five. Yeah, yeah you will pop up then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Well, thanks again, everyone, for watching this uh, great episode. I'm glad that yeah. we were able to address this from a uh, two men perspective. I think this was really good. Um, and that's why I like having these conversations so we can help men. And I'm sure that there's ladies that listen to. Uh, so you can also, if you want to subscribe, you can also find this on um, Apple Podcasts. You can find this on yeah. Spotify as well. And you can also subscribe on YouTube to see the video version as well. So make sure you share this with a friend, like it, leave a comment, leave a review. We're not always asking for uh, financial help. You don't have to always have to give financial. Oh. You can do something simple as just sharing. As simple as that. You could just yeah. repost it, leave a review. And 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 that's um, that's something that will that will take you even further sometimes than people giving you money. So you never exactly. be able to listen to this. This is Sean Heineman with co-host Vincent. Yes. And we will be talking to you soon, people. Take care.